In this video, I'm picking up from where I left off in my last video, although I've got a big project planned in this one. But before I start this project, I've got some servicing to do while the parts are out. I've pulled the turbo and replaced the leaky oil drain with a hard line, and I've got to diagnose why a water pump has died after only two months. Well, this is the moment of truth. Yep, click, click, click. Flippin' heck, I can't believe that. Premature bearing failure, basically. It's very disappointing that uh, essentially a top brand water pump is the best part of what you would call like a thousand crowns, you know, like hundred dollars, something like that, is on its way out just after, let's say, two months. Whilst I'm overhauling the cooling system, I've pulled this out. Um, this is the engine heater that I use to heat the coolant and it works not with a pump but through convection so the, the hot coolant goes up into the block and the cold coolant is drawn from the bottom and you get the circulation around the system and after about five hours you've, you've got temperatures of about 38 degrees above ambient inside the engine so the engine should be quite warm. They do take a long time to work though. I'm going to build a new system because this is no good for wilderness adventures because it draws too much power and produces too little heat. So I bought myself a little heat exchanger. This is gonna be a slightly different system. I'm gonna try and imitate something that already exists on the market in a complete package, but in a more kind of camping based way. As I mentioned at the start of the video, this is gonna be a big project and I have no idea if it will work as effectively as I need. But if it does work, I will have one system that can preheat my engine cab and tent in arctic conditions for up to 73 hours before I need to drive again and charge the auxiliary battery. It will also be in the engine bay, removable of course, so it's going to save a lot of space at the rear. There it is, all finished. Well, not all finished. I need to paint it really and do some sort of corrosion stuff on the inside. But basically I used a bit of 40 mil plumbing pipe, welded some uh, beads on the end basically and smoothed them out with the grinder. So there's a bit of a bead and you've got two outlets. Now I wasn't originally gonna do that, but I decided to try it. This is a prototype, unless it works first time then it was intentional. But if you look on the inside, one's higher than the other. And the idea is the hot water coming out of the exchanger and being higher in that larger pipe and going up, and then the cold water from the bottom of the radiator coming back and going down that hole. That's my plan, we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, then I'll just weld this up and have something coming from somewhere else. But I haven't really got a lot of options on the vehicle. With my latest shiny installed, I can now move on to building the actual unit. I'm pulling apart my original portable system, which is a risky move, given it's a complete working unit that I actually rely on for removing condensation from the roof tent when I'm camping. I've cut the nose off of the plastic housing, the same square shape as the matrix, and I've screwed and glued the matrix in place using a high temperature adhesive. It does take 12 hours to set though, so in the meantime, I've found a location for this abomination to live. It's going to be behind the front cross member, which is where the factory intercooler lives for the TD setup originally. And for a fuel supply, I've teed off the fuel line post filter. But now it's time to reinstall the turbocharger. Oh, uh, things are going back together now, which is great. Turbo's in, all piped up, but the new pump should be here tomorrow morning, gonna do an oil change, new filter, and then see actually what that diesel heater thing does, because it could be complete wank and not work. Now I know what you're thinking, that is a pretty high-tech looking penis pump, but some of us need more suction than others. 
it's all together and it hopefully should function pretty well. I mean, um, you know, I've tried my best to kind of keep it compact and removable so it all comes out in one piece. Just, you know, unplug it, disconnect this dong here, which I'm just going to get out of my face because it's kind of bringing flashbacks of, of Bigfoot. This end here on the back isn't complete yet. I need to get like a Cobra style um, like silicon coupling just here because the clearances are too tight inside the vehicle. And that kind of brings me to my next point. What I've built here already exists on the market. It's nothing new. Um, the one I was looking at actually on Alibaba has the hot water outlets here. So the heat exchanger is built into the bottom of the unit, um, meaning it's way more compact and a lot less complicated. Although this little exchanger is good quality, it's brass and copper, so it should be very effective. But you know, we're gonna find out today. But you also have specific diesel engine heaters that are designed to warm up engines and they look a lot different to this. I don't know whether they blow out warm air. I do know that they heat the engine and they're very good at doing it. But the thing is, is like you're gonna pay around about 3,000 euros for a kit like that. So this is kind of why I've chose to build it myself. I have a diesel heater. It's an Eber Spatcher. Well, the hardware is anyway, not the electronics. So it's a decent unit. It's been reliable with a heat exchanger on the end. Maybe it's gonna do what I want it to. So um, the long-term goal of this is this outlet here will go into the Jeep. There'll be a Y just before it with a switch. So I can direct it whether I want the hot air going into the Jeep or going into the rooftop tent. So I can connect up a sort of hose to it and heat my tent. But also what I'm gonna do is have the exhaust from this going to the bottom of the oil pan on like a heat sink thing that I've drawn up but I haven't actually made yet. So it's gonna heat the oil as well prior to start up. Whether or not that really is needed, I don't know. I mean, I spoke to someone on Instagram last night and I only found out that they actually have a heat exchanger, an EGR cooler that goes on the end of these exhausts and you can heat coolant up that way as well. So if it really is that inefficient at heating the coolant, maybe I get one of those and I run two hoses from somewhere else in the engine and try and get some circulation going that way. The water pump just arrived as well. and I went for Stark this time. These are the last two pumps I burnt through from Blueprint. And Blueprint is supposed to be quite good quality and reliable, but given I've done three of these in the last, well, few years, I decided to try something else. It was equally as expensive. Yeah, look at that. This is what I love about products these days, these parts. They just put an O-ring in the box with this lump of metal. And it could just be like landing on it as it's going through like shipping and stuff and sort of damaging the o-ring it's, it's honestly like you just don't get good quality stuff these days but i have bought o-rings on ebay you know that fit because i have had this problem so many times before um but we'll take a look at it see whether it works There's a lot of conflicting information about putting coolant in the VM engine because um, the engine's at an angle like that. Uh, it used to be said that there would be an air pocket in cylinder head number one if you didn't level the back of the vehicle so the engine was flat. That's bullshit. Um, I've seen actually pictures of the heads cut open. There's nowhere for that to happen. If I could find those pictures again, I'd show you, but it was... It was a long time ago when I, when I found them on some forum somewhere. But I'm using a hybrid organic acid technology coolant, HOT. Um, I think I got that right. Basically, it's a more modern coolant and um, I found it to perform really well. One thing that it does do well is because you have a lot of different metals in this engine. You've got copper, brass, aluminium, iron, steel, um, you know, lots of different metals. What, what you find is it keeps down electrolysis. So if you get like a multimeter and you try and get a reading off of your coolant um, use, using the battery and then putting the other terminal in the coolant, you'll find that um, this stuff's very, very good for, for keeping that conductivity down in the coolant, which is what essentially can lead to corrosion later down the line. But um, there's no special way to put coolant in. You just fill it up and then you run the engine till the thermostat opens and <clears throat> squeeze the, the pipes. So I uh, kind of forgot to connect those up. It is very early in the morning, um, so forgive me. I better do that first. I just lost half a litre. So the Hot Blowy 9000 is going where the old intercooler used to be on the standard setup. 
it's going to go in the cross member up here. I don't know how well it's going to do with moisture and other such problems because, uh, you know, that, that is a thing. Moisture is probably going to be the death of it. But you know what? It sat on the back of the vehicle for a long time. I jet washed it. I didn't care about it and it survived. So, you know, maybe it'll be okay. But that's kind of how it's going to go, just like that. And that can go up there somewhere for the time being. Um, and the power is going to run somewhere. I'm going to have a plug somewhere, basically connect it up. And this is the co the controller LCD screen. That actually has to go um, all the way into the to the vehicle. But uh, there's the fuel. I can actually get that out. It's gonna start spilling out pretty fast. Yep. Oh, and I screwed it up. Yep. Because actually, that's gonna do that. I love diesel all over my hands. It's the best. There we go. Another thing I forgot to mention, though. Do some rotations on the pump. They recommend 10. 10 complete rotations. Looks like the belt's on. I know I'm keeping you all waiting and you're just as interested as I am to see whether the Sucker Blow 9000 works, but I gotta do an oil change. Um, that has gotta happen. I got some new oil to go in. New filter, plug, all that kind of stuff. So this is what I'm going to be using, Liquid Molly. I used this actually last time. Really good oil, but I'm dropping down to 0 W30. And I'll probably run this all year. Obviously the 0 is really just the lowest temperatures, the 30 is the upper. So it should really be no different to the 10 W30 or 5 W30. I can't remember what I've got at the moment that I'm running now. Except it will be able to go down below minus 30. Thanks. Let's put it on 3.9 hertz. Pretty standard for a cold winter's day up in the roof tent. So uh, this is it. We're reaching maximum suck. A bit loud, hopefully you can hear me. Obviously I haven't got the silencer on the diesel heater so it's gonna make a roar. I've got a long way to go with this project. Um, and uh, now I know it works, which it does, I'm putting my hand down on that uh, thing you saw me make earlier. I don't even know what to call it anymore. It's red hot and hot coolant is flowing up one of the larger pipes. And hopefully it's gonna go into the, to the block and warm the engine up. It's only been going for about 10 minutes. So yeah, it's really positive. I mean, obviously we're indoors, it's 15 degrees C in here. We're not outside. So it's gonna be a bit slower when it's cold, but what I will do is I'll insulate all the piping um, so that it has a chance to get up into the main system a bit faster without losing too much heat. So uh, that's great. The system has been running for almost two hours now, on about five hertz. My methods for measuring the temperature are pretty inaccurate to be honest, but that being said, it's a success, which I can now improve upon. Well there you go, heat is off so now you can hear me properly. 
Flipping heck, I'm glad I managed to get that to work. And 53 degrees C or around 50 degrees C at the top of the thermostat isn't bad at all. And I tested it on the dash and it registered at 40 degrees C. And that sensors right back on cylinder head number four at the back of the block there. So obviously there's gonna be a difference, but I'm measuring it from kind of outside on the metal here. So it could be that the coolant's actually a bit higher. I don't know. But still, the real test is when I go out and it's minus 20 and then I'll see how it does then. But I still have a long way to go. I say a long way, I just need to order a load of shit off Amazon and get the project finished. Because I'm gonna borrow a hole saw, cut a small hole in the Jeep, put a duct in, so the DZ will be blowing hot air in the Jeep. And like I keep saying, one of those Ys with closable valves, so I can direct there in the Jeep, or I can decide to have it going to the roof tent. And then I just need to think of a place where I can have a little outlet or I can connect a hose to the side of the vehicle or somewhere that's out the way so I can run that up to the to the roof tent when I want to use it in the roof tent. And then there's the, 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 the exhaust. I mean, what am I gonna do with that? Because that's a total waste of heat. That's, that's actually very good heat. So ideally I wanna buy one of those EGR heat exchangers that go on the end of that and run maybe a couple of other hoses. And then basically it's gonna be a very warm system in a short space of time and preserve the health of my engine because that's kind of what all this is about. You know, I've, I do a lot of winter camping. It's, it's my favorite time of year to be out. But one of the most challenging things is managing warming the engine up after it's been sat for a couple of days or even one night in sub-zero temperatures. It's really bad for engine health and being a, um, a cheap ass, I decided to make my own system. So if you've got any comments and suggestions, please leave them in the description below. Um, I'm not sure whether I'll film me doing the ducting in the next video because I want to end this video here because it's Friday and uh, you know weekends with the family. I won't have time to muck around with this um, until next week sometime. So I'll probably put this video out on Sunday. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thanks for your support on Patreon for those who do support me on there. And just in general, thanks for watching if you do enjoy the videos. And uh, I'll see you very soon in another one. Take care.